Hello and welcome to this webinar, which is called Conversion Strategies, Turning Interested People into Customers. So before we get into the session, let me just introduce myself. So I am Lucille Roach and I am the session facilitator on behalf of Hustle & Heels, who are delivering this for Elevate at Crate. And so if you do not know me, I am a business startup coach. And what I do is that I work with new female entrepreneurs and I help them to learn what to do to identify and attract the right clients so that they can start making money in their business. And I started my business, Asset Business Consultancy, in September 2018. And when I started my business, I had no clue what I was doing. So before I started my business, I was a manager. So at the time that I started my business, I was in management for about eight years. And then before that, I was, a, I was a lawyer. So I had no experience of running my own business. And I just assumed that the way that you would run your business is just to kind of look at what everybody else was doing and just kind of copy them. So that's what I did. I saw people posting on social media. I saw that they were kind of making sales from the posts that they were putting out there on social media. So I was like, well, that seems easy. I can do that. So I started posting on social media, but I had no strategy for what it is that I was posting. Nothing that I was posting was really tied to what it is that I was doing and if I'm honest I wasn't really sure what I was doing in my business so I just started posting on social media expecting that like other people then people would buy from me and it didn't happen and it didn't happen because I didn't really have any strategy like I say for what it is that I was going to post and then where I was going to lead people after they commented on my post so I was in this position where I had this idea for this business I was passionate about my business but I just didn't know what to do to kind of get started and it took me a really long time to be able to figure out what it is that I was missing. And the thing that I was missing in my business, I was missing my foundation. I was trying to copy what everybody else was doing in their business, but I didn't know the work that they had done behind the scenes to get clear on who their ideal client was, to get clear on what their offers were and, and how those offers could transform the lives of the people that they worked with. So I hadn't done any of that work. So I was just trying to jump straight in and start selling without first really being clear on who it is that I was talking to, what it is that I was doing and how it is that I could help them. And so the moment that I started to build out my foundation, the moment I started to get clear on exactly who I was talking to, what it is that I was doing, what my offers were and how it could help my ideal clients, that's when I started to attract paying clients. That's when things changed for me. And it made such a difference to me and it helped to boost my confidence as well as a business owner because it validated what I was doing. And so now I host a podcast called the Female Startup Podcast. I am a public speaker, so I speak at events and summits. I've written a book called Discover 22 of the Biggest Mistakes Most Business Owners Make and Learn What You Can Do to Avoid Them. And that is available on Amazon. And I am also a freelance trainer as well. So that's just a little bit of a background about me, just so that you know who I am. And the purpose of this session is really to help you to be able to understand how it is that you can convert people through the different stages of your business marketing and sales funnel. And also to let you know what actually is a sales funnel, because you may not know what a sales funnel is. And so during this webinar, you're going to learn how it is that you can attract more clients, how to build a conversion funnel, and then how to convert those people then into customers. Because it's one thing to be able to get the attention of your ideal client, but it's another thing entirely to be able to convert that attention into a sale. And that is what we are going to cover today. And one thing that I want to talk about is, and again, this is not something that I think is talked about enough, especially as a business owner, and this is not something that I gave any thought to whatsoever when I was starting my business. And that is, you need to know your conversion strategies. So you need to know 
your conversion numbers, you need to know your conversion strategies and your conversion numbers are how many people come to your business and then how many people buy from you. So let's say you have 100 people that visit your website on a monthly basis. Of those 100 people, how many people buy from you? So that's your conversion rate. So knowing your conversion rate gives you a really clear idea of, okay, then I have this many people who visit my website or of this many people who land on my landing page, this is how many people buy. But it's not just about identifying what your conversion rate is. You have to develop a conversion strategy so that when people do land on your website, there is a process that you are taking them through to convert them to the next stage, which obviously means that you need to be aware of what that next stage is in your business. So what I want to do is I'm going to break this down into separate sections to help you to understand, first of all, how to develop this conversion strategy, how to understand your conversion numbers and what it is that you need to have in place to be able to get this right. And the first thing that you want to do is that you want to know, in order to attract your customers, in order to attract more clients, you firstly need to know who it is that they are. So you have to know who your ideal client is. You also have to make it clear what it is that you do. And then you also have to be visible. And when I say you know your ideal client, that goes back to who is it that you want to work with? Who is that person that you want to work with? And sometimes this can be quite vague when I'm speaking to people. So they'll say, you know, I just want to work with all women or I want to work with anybody who has ever suffered from back pain. But the way that you talk to a young person who is suffering from back pain is going to be different to the way that you speak to somebody in their 50s who's suffering from back pain. So knowing who your ideal client is helps you to get really clear on how to communicate with them, how to build that connection with them. And that connection is really important if you want to be able to convert your followers, convert your visitors on your website to paying clients. You also have to make it clear what it is that you do. And most of the time when a new business owner or a business owner is asked the question, what is it that you do? They tell people their job title. So they'll say, I'm an accountant or I'm a career coach. But that doesn't really tell people what it is that you do. It doesn't really tell people who it is that you work with. And so having that clear message and being clear on what it is that you do means that when you are going to somewhere like a networking event and you are introducing yourself, if you're making it clear exactly what it is that you do and who it is that you work with, then what will happen is, is that there are going to be people there who are listening to what it is that you are saying. And they're going to be like, oh, this person helps new business owners to manage their books in a way that's really easy and simplistic. That's exactly what it is that I need. So because you're being clear on what it is that you do, you're going to be attracting the attention of the right people. The other element that you need to have to be able to attract more customers is that you need to be visible. People need to know that you exist. And I remember when I started my business and I spent months behind the scenes building my website, because again, I thought that's what you're supposed to do. You post on social media and then you build a website. So I spent months behind the scenes building this website. And then when I hit publish on Wix and I launched my website, nobody visited it. And the reason that nobody visited it is because nobody knew that my website existed, because I didn't tell people about it as I was building it. I didn't tell people about it properly then once I'd launched it. So people can't buy from you if they don't know that you exist. So that's the other element that you need. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through these three aspects in a little bit more detail, just so that you understand exactly what it means to know your ideal clients, what it means to be clear about what it is that you do, and then what it means to also be visible as well. And so the first element of knowing who your ideal clients are, and I like to kind of split them into two different categories. They're your demographics and then they're your psychographics. So your demographics are things which are used to describe just, just different sectors of the population. So it includes things like their age, their gender, and their location. And the reason that this is helpful for you is because if you are a small business and maybe you are serving people locally in your area, then obviously you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you are targeting people who are in your location. Within your particular type of business, you may be targeting people of a specific gender. So it may be men or it may be women. And that doesn't mean that you won't work with both sexes. It just means that 
that potentially you focus on one gender more than the other. And that's what I do. So my focus is primarily on women. But that doesn't mean that I won't work with a man. And it's primarily on women for me, because in my career, I've worked, I've managed teams of mostly women. I have managed men as well, but the majority of the teams that I have managed have all been female. And I understand that there are specific differences between a the mindset of a woman running a business and the mindset of a man running a business, because I am a woman and I understand the challenges that I faced when I was running my business, the fears and the doubts that I experienced when I was running a business. So that it, for me, that is specific to a typical gender. And I can relate to that. I can speak to that, how I struggled as a new female business owner to get the confidence to be able to put myself out there. I struggled as a new female business owner to go to these in-person networking events, which were very male-led and very male-driven. And so I can speak about that when I am trying to develop that connection with my ideal clients. Age is something that's really useful as well. You can be as specific as you want to be with your age. But the reality is, is that it's unlikely that when you say that you want to work with a particular age, you're going to say, I want to work with somebody who is 25. Typically, what happens is that when we are given an age range, that's what we do. We use an age range. So we'll say, for example, they are between the ages of 18 and 45. So being clear on these elements of what your ideal client or who your ideal client is, helps you to learn where to look to be able to find your ideal clients. Because again, if you know where their location is, then maybe you can make sure that you are going to the local shops and that you are leaving flyers in the local shops because you know that your ideal client is going to be visiting at those local shops. If you have a client that's of a particular age group, you can go to events which cater to that age group. If you are going to networking events, you can go to networking events specifically for the gender that you are wanting to work with. So in my business, when I am looking at networking events, I will always go to networking events for female entrepreneurs, because that is my ideal client. So that helps me to narrow things down a little bit, if I get a little bit more specific about who it is that I want to work with. So being clear on these demographics, being clear on things like their age, their gender, their location, that's going to help you to create a clearer picture of who your ideal client is. So those are the demographics. Then you have things like the psychographics. So the psychographics are the behaviors that kind of drive their actions, that it's what makes them do things. It's what makes them buy and leads them to buy in. And so some of the things that you want to know when you're thinking about the psychographics of your ideal clients is what is it that they are struggling with? Now, this is a really important question to ask because people buy for one of two reasons, to move them away from pain or to bring them towards pleasure. And you have to know what is the motivating factor that's going to lead your ideal clients to buy from you. And so when you think about your ideal client, that's one of the first questions that you have to ask yourself. What is it that they are struggling with? And so, for example, if you are a weight loss coach or somebody, maybe the thing that your ideal client struggles with is that no matter what it is that they do, no matter how hard it is that they diet, no matter how much it is that they exercise, they just cannot lose their weight. And so that's the thing that they struggle with. They struggle with dieting, they struggle with exercising, and they feel like they've kind of, you know, they've run out of options and they just don't know what, it el what else it is that they can do. So knowing what it is that they struggle with, you can position your products or your services as the solution to the thing that they are struggling with. Because if you know that they've tried dieting and they've tried exercising and it's not working, maybe the way that you're going to approach it is by focusing on the mindset first by helping them to overcome those mental blocks that are stopping them from being able to stick to their diet, that's stopping them from being able to exercise. Because once you know what that struggle is, you can start creating content that speaks about that struggle. So for me, I know that my clients struggle to first of all, get clear on, well, who is my ideal client and where is it that I can find them? So when I am creating content to connect with my audience, I'm going to be talking about that struggle. I'm going to be talking about why it's so difficult to find the, your ideal clients and what it is that you can do instead. And what that does is that it positions me as an expert and it helps my ideal client to know that I get them, that I understand them, that I understand what it is that they are going through. And yesterday I was delivering a training session and one of the participants on the training session 
she explained that she was going to be a counsellor or grief counsellor and she was going to be specialising in helping people to come to terms with the loss of their pets and so it's grief counselling for pets and she said that one of the things that a lot of these a lot of people struggle with when it comes to the passing away of their pets is that they don't feel like people understand the impact that it's had on them they don't feel like people understand how important the pet was to them and how much of a part of their family the pet is because of the fact that she knows what that struggle is, she is going to be in one of the best positions to reach that ideal client because she can talk about that struggle. She can say things like, I know that you probably feel frustrated because people don't understand how much your pet meant to you, but I understand it. And I understand that your pet was a member of the family. And when you lost your pet, it it, you know, you lost a major part of yourself. That builds connection, that strengthens the relationship between you and your ideal clients. It removes the barriers because then they feel understood by you. And then that makes them more likely then to follow you to the next stage in your conversion process, whatever that may be. And we're going to come on to talk about what that stage may be. The other thing that you have to understand about your ideal client is what is it that motivates them? So what is it that's motivating them to be able to take action? So in my case, one of the things that's motivating my clients to be able to take action is that they are stuck in a job that they don't like. They really don't like their job. They're tired of working for somebody else. They're tired of having a cap on their income. They're tired of not having enough money every month. They're tired of not having the freedom to be able to work on the things that they are passionate about. So what motivates them is the desire to be able to make an impact and help people with what it is that they're doing, but also create financial freedom for themselves. So because that's something that motivates them, again, I can speak about that and I can speak about the things that motivates my ideal client clients and again that's going to help them to understand and see that I get them that I know what it is that they're going through I get them because maybe I've been through it myself and if you're listening to this and you're struggling to identify well how where do I even start with the demographics where do I even start with being able to identify the age the gender or the location of the person it is that I want to work with I always recommend that you start with the end in mind, which is start with the product or service that you are offering. So if you are somebody who is providing face creams for people who suffer from acne, so you suffer from acne. So what I would do is I would start with that product and then I would start asking some questions. So then I'd start asking myself, OK, then this is my product who is going to benefit from this product? Or well, the person that's going to benefit from this product is somebody who's been suffering with acne. Okay, then. So if somebody is suffering from acne, what age range is it that they're going to be? And so you could decide that you want to specifically focus on a curing acne in teenagers, or maybe it's that you want to focus on curing acne in middle-aged people, men or women. So you would start to st think about the product and then start thinking about then who is it that this was created for? Who is it that I could really focus on with this product? And, you would, and you'll know who it is that you want to focus on because of your product. Is your product specifically designed for people who are older? So maybe the makeup of their skin is different. So there has to be specific ingredients in there to be able to help people who are a little bit older. Are the ingredients specifically for people who are younger? Because maybe, again, the ingredients in there are specifically catered towards the skin of young people and it really benefits them or is your product something that is so universal that it can be used by anybody aged between 18 and 45 regardless of the type of skin that they have the type of condition that they have on their skin so that's one of the ways that you can start to then drill down and be more specific about who it is that you want to work with if you are providing a service, so for example, if you are an event planner, then you have to ask yourself the question, I'm an event planner, where is it that I want to be working when I'm helping my clients to find events? Because it's likely that you're going to want to be working in your local area because you would have built up relationships with these organizations where events can be held. So it's likely then when you're thinking about, okay, then what's the location of my ideal client? That location is going to be the location where you are based. And then again, thinking about gender, when you think about your product and you think about, again, who could benefit from this product or service and who could benefit from the product or service? It could be men and women. 
the product that you've created or the service that you've created could be equally valuable to both men and women. That's when you have to ask yourself the question, who is it that I would prefer to work with? Do I have a preference? And if you don't have a preference, then in terms of gender, you're going to say that it's men and women that you work with. And then again, when you're thinking about these psychographics and you focus on your product as well, and then you ask yourself, what is it that they struggle with? Again, you're going to talk about if we're focusing on the acne cream, you're going to talk about the fact that they're struggling with the fact that they are maybe in their 30s and they're still experiencing acne. So that means that they are they don't feel confident about themselves. They don't want to go out there in the world because they're, they feel embarrassed by their acne. Again, if you start talking about that in that way, that's going to demonstrate to your ideal clients that you understand them, that you get them, that you know them, that you've put in time and effort to be able to really understand exactly what it is that they're struggling with and to provide a solution to that struggle. And then what's motivating them? Maybe the thing that's motivating them is that they want to start dating and that they and because they don't feel confident about themselves, they haven't been putting themselves out there to date. So one of the things that you could do when you are talking about the service or the product that you offer is you could say something like, you know, maybe you desire to settle down and get married. But the thing that's stopping you is that you're not comfortable with your skin. Well, what if there was a product that could help you to eliminate your acne so that you could feel more confident and then you would be able to go out and meet the person that you were meant to be with for the rest of your life? That is so powerful to be able to connect with what it is that really motivates your ideal client. And if you're not sure about what motivates your ideal client, take a poll, ask them some questions so that you can get to understand what is it that's kind of motivating them? What is it that want that's kind of making them at this point in their life, look for the solution that you have? What is it that that's now making them think I want to eliminate my acne once and for all. Because once you start to understand these things, you can better communicate with your ideal clients. And as I say, this isn't something that I did when I started my business and I should have done it. And because of that, I struggled. I struggled to connect with my ideal client because the the posts that I was putting up weren't connected with who my ideal client was. It wasn't connected with what they were struggling with or what motivated them. And so because of that, people weren't connecting with what it is that I was putting out there on social media. And it just seemed like I was pr promoting generic posts. Whereas if you're clear about all of these things, and of course, these are just elements of what it is that you need to know about your ideal clients. But if you are clear about these core things, that's what's going to build that deeper connection between you and your ideal client. Okay. And so the next thing that you need to do in order to be able to make sure that you are connecting with people and making sure that you're able to attract the right people is that you need to make it clear what it is that you do, because there's a saying that confused people don't buy. And when you are being clear about what it is that you do, you're making it clear who it is that you work with. So we've just talked about your ideal client. Who is it that you work with? You're making it clear what it is that you help them to do and how you help them. So I said at the beginning when I was introducing myself that I was a business startup coach. And then I helped new female entrepreneurs to learn how to identify and attract their ideal clients. So they can start generating money consistently in their business. And the way that I do that is that I take them through the seven steps to entrepreneurial success so that they know step by step exactly what it is that they should be focusing on in their business to help them to not only attract their ideal client, but convert that ideal client into a paying customer. So by saying that, by making it clear exactly what it is that I do and who it is that I work with and how it is that I help them, then that's going to attract the attention of my ideal client. And that message that I just said just now, I could include in the bio of my Instagram page. So when somebody goes to my Instagram page, that's the first thing that they see and they can see what it is that I'm all about. I can put that on my LinkedIn bio. I can put that description on my website on the front page. So whoever's landing on my front, landing on my website, it makes it clear exactly who it is that I am working with or exactly who it is that I can help and what it is that I can help them to do. And then what that does then is it helps people to make an informed choice about whether they want to learn more about me, about whether they think I am the person that can help them. But if I just said on my website, I will help you to build your business. 
That's really vague. It doesn't, it, I don't, it doesn't make it clear exactly who it is that I help, how it is that I can help them to build their business and, and, exalt, and also what my process is for helping them to do that. So because it's so vague, people are going to be looking at that and they're going to be like, oh, well, I don't know what you do. It's not really clear about what it is that you do. And I was speaking to a client yesterday and one of the things, and she was describing what it is that she was doing and she was creating her pitch and she delivered her pitch and I gave her some feedback on her pitch. And her pitch is pretty much what I'm taking you through now, which is just this description of what it is that you do, who it is that you work with and how it is that you help them. And she said something like, you know, and I help them to, you know, I, I help them to be able to make sure that they are, their emotional needs are being met. And I, and I challenged her and I said, well, what does that mean? What does it mean to be able to meet the emotional needs? Because one of the things that you have to make sure that you do when you are talking about what it is that you do is that you have to be clear. You don't want to leave any questions in somebody's mind about, well, what does that mean? What's that word that you just said? What does it mean to be fulfilled? What does it mean to overcome your limiting beliefs? So you want to make sure that when it is that you are creating your message, when, you, when it is that you are describing what it is that you do, that you're eliminating any jargon. So any phrases that people may not understand. So if there are phrases which are common to your industry, don't use those when you are explaining what it is that you do, because all that's going to happen is that you're going to confuse people and confuse people do not buy exactly as I have said. And I am sure that you have been in the same position where I have been before, where I have walked into a shop or I've landed on a website. And if it hasn't been immediately clear to me what this business does, then I leave because I'm confused and I don't know if I need what it is that they are selling because I don't know what it is that they do. And that's what's going to happen to you. If people land on your website and it's not clear from your website what it is that you do, people are going to leave because they don't know why it is that they should stay there. And they don't have the any incentive to scroll through your website to figure out what it is that you do. So you have to make sure that you're kind of capturing people's attention from the get go. And one of the ways that you can do that is by having a clear message on your website that talks about what it is that you do, who it is that you help and how it is that you help them to include that in your bio on your social media pages and in the content that you are creating to make it clear who it is that you work with and what it is that you help them to do. Now that I have developed myself, every time I post something on social media, it is clear who it is that I'm speaking to. It is clear that I'm speaking to a new female entrepreneur with a service based business. It is clear how it is that I can help them because every single one of my posts is centered around that. It's centered around who it is that I work with and how it is that I can help them. Because again, when people are visiting your social media page, if they don't understand what it is that you do, if it's not immediately clear to them, they're just going to leave. And that's not what you want. You obviously want to create a situation where people are staying on your page, where people are exploring you in more detail so that they can understand you. OK, so say who it is that you work with. So be clear. So, you know, say something like women in their 40s or new female business owners. What is it that you help them to do? For me, I say identify and attract new clients. If maybe you are a nutritionist, you'll say I help them to lose weight or I help them to lose five stone or I help them to choose a diet that doesn't feel like that they're dieting. And how do you help them? Maybe it's by helping them to choose the right foods for them, foods that are going to boost my energy. And in my case, I say I help them by taking them through my seven step framework that helps them to identify step by step exactly what to do to take somebody from interested to a buyer. So being clear about what it is that you do is going to make such a massive difference to you being able to attract clients. The next thing that you need to be clear about in order to attract clients is that you need to be visible. Again, people cannot buy from you if they do not know that you exist. And one of the reasons why I struggled in my business when I started is because nobody really knew what I was doing. So again, like I said, I was creating content on social media. I built my website. But I wasn't really, I, I didn't really tell people what it is that I was doing. Like I didn't really do anything to let people know, hey, I'm here. This is what it is that I do. And this is who it is that I can help. And so there's three elements about, about how it is that you can be more visible in your business so that more of the right people can know that you exist. 
And one of the first things that you can do is to create a plan to help you to get yourself out there. Now, that plan could be that you decide that you are going to attend a networking event or a series of networking events to be able to get the word out there about exactly what it is that you do. And so if you were creating a plan to go to networking events, it would probably go something like this. And so one of the biggest things that I see a lot of entrepreneurs missing when it comes to setting goals is they're not very spe they're not specific enough first of all about what it is that they want to achieve and then also they haven't broken down their goals so that they're clear step by step what it is that they need to do so let's say your plan to get yourself out there is to attend 10 networking events a month very clear very specific you know what it is that you are aiming for and so the first step to being able to attend those 10 networking events is to identify the 10 networking events that you want to attend. And in order to do that, you need to know who your ideal client is so that you can make sure that you are going to the events that your ideal client is likely to be. So like I said earlier, when I am looking for networking events, I am looking for events that are specifically targeted towards female empowerment or women in business or new business owners. That's what I'm doing. And so then once you have identified the type of networking events that you want to attend then you're going to go somewhere like Eventbrite or Meetup and you're going to start to look for for events that fill, fall within the category of the type of events that you want to go to. And then you're going to start booking onto those events. But that isn't the end of your plan, because then you have to ask yourself, OK, then what is my objective in going to this networking event? What is it that I want to get from this event? And typically, when I'm going to a networking event, I want to get one of two things. I want to get a new client or I want to get a referral partner. If I want to get a if I want to get a new client, then the way that I will approach the networking event is going to be different to the way I would approach it if I wanted to get a referral partner. So if I wanted to get a client, then I would make it clear when I'm introducing myself at the networking event what it is that I want to get. So I would say again, you know, I help new female entrepreneurs to learn how to identify and attract their ideal client so they can start generating money consistently in their business. And at the moment, I have a free call where I will help you to identify three key things that you need to know about your ideal client. If you are interested in booking that call, I've put the link in the chat and all you need to do is click on it to book the call. So because I'm clear on what my objective is, that means that I'm clear when I go to my networking event about what it is that I need to say to people to get them to book that call with me. So having the plan to help you to get out there means that you're going from, OK, then what is it that I need to do? And you're filling in the details all in between so you know exactly what to do. So have a plan that helps you to get out there in whichever way is comfortable for you. So if it's not networking events, maybe your plan to get yourself out there is to post on social media. And if that's the case, then again, you need a plan for social media. You need to identify what type of content you're going to post on social media. Is it going to be videos? Is it going to be static posts? Is it going to be carousel posts? Is it going to be reels? Are you going to go live? And then you also have to think about what is it that I'm going to say when I get onto social media? What is the plan that I have to be able to communicate with my ideal clients and demonstrate to them that I know them? And I gave you some tips earlier of things that you can do to be able to get to know your ideal clients and the type of content that you can create that helps you to build that connection with your ideal clients. But then you also have to think about, well, how am I going to be able to get them from seeing my post to then taking some kind of action with me? And one of the ways that you can do that is by having a really clear call to action where you are telling people what it is that you want them to do. So in the example that I just gave you, I, my call to action was, you know, book a call if you want to learn three things that you need to know about your ideal clients. So that's a very clear call to action. So anybody who is curious about what are these three things I need to know about my ideal client is going to book a call with me. And then once they've booked a call with me, then I will have the opportunity to then talk to them about the services that I offer and how it is that it could help them in their business. The next thing that you need to do when you are when you when you want to be visible is to share your story. You are your business. You are not Amazon. You are not this big mammoth entity. You are your business. People are buying into you. So when people are buying your products or services, they are buying from you, even if it's 
you know, it, even if it's your business that they are purchasing from, it's from you. And people want to hear your story. So you can be visible by showing up and talking about what it is that you do and sharing your story, sharing your why. I love now to go onto Instagram stories and just talk about things that have been happening in my life that's connected to my business, lessons that I've learned, things that I have picked up, because people like people. You need to build that know, like, and trust factor. And the way that you do that is by letting people know about you. That doesn't mean that you have to tell them every aspect of your life, but just sharing your story, sharing how it is that you got started, why you got started, sharing what it is that you are working on today, why you're working on it, why you chose this specific name for the product or the service that you created, why you created this product or service. So sharing your story helps you to build a connection to people. So you're more than just a business. You then become a person to people. And then people want to then know more about you as well. That's why so many people are kind of fascinated by celebrities because they want to know the person behind the celebrity. They want to know what makes them tick. They want to know the things that they do in their in their day to day life so that they can feel like, oh, they're normal like me. So sharing your story helps you to build that connection and helps you to be able to develop that know, like and trust factor that you need in order for your clients to buy from you. The other thing that you need to do in order to be visible is that you need to tell people what it is that you do. Pretty much every day that I go on social media, I'm making it clear what it is that I do. So if I'm recording a video at the beginning of the video, I'll make it clear what it is that I do and what it is that I offer. And I always or I frequently post a post on social media, which is just an overview of the services that I offer, because a lot of the times people may not know the services that you offer. And so just by telling them and just by saying, oh, by the way, I've got something new in the shop click the link in my bio and you'll be able to see it. Or I will go on Instagram stories and I'll talk about a new product or a new service that I am creating so people know that I'm creating this service. I have a services page on my website and I link to that services page through the link in my Instagram bio. So people can always go to my website and they can see the services that I offer. Whenever it is that I am creating a new service, then I'll talk about that then on social media and on my podcast as well. So I'm always making it clear what it is that I offer. Because again, I I have spoken to business owners and and you know and and suddenly they've revealed oh yeah you know I've, I've created this product and it helps you to be able to I don't know remove the dark circles from under your eye and I'm like well I didn't know that you had that product why didn't you tell me about it why didn't you tell anybody about that product people can't buy from you if they don't know what it is that you are offering so you always have to make it a habit to let people know what you are offering and it doesn't need to be in a salesy way because like I say when I'm telling people what I what I offer what I do is that I have a post that just says these are just the services that I offer if you're interested send me a message and we'll have a conversation I will have a services section on my website and I will link to it via the link in my bio I'll go on Instagram stories and I'll share what it is that I'm currently working on what it is that I'm offering maybe I've got a specific offer of the month then I will share details of that as well. But I'm making sure that people know what it is that I offer so that when they are thinking about, oh, I need somebody to help me to figure out how it is that I can attract clients, they think about me. And you want the same thing to happen with you as well. If people know what it is that you're offering, if they know that you sell a particular cream or a particular candle, if they know what you offer, when they are ready to buy, they're going to come looking for you because you're going to be showing up, you're going to be visible, and they know what you're offering so when they are ready to buy they will then buy from you okay Okay. so now we talk about building conversion strategies now you may have heard of this marketing term before and it's called ADA, and it stands for Awareness, Interest, Desire, and Action. And it's basically talking you through the journey that somebody will go through in order to be able to to become a paying client because it, it because the way that it works in sales and I had no clue about this when I started obviously because I just thought you post something on social media and then somebody buys but there's a process that people go through before they buy from you and so this is just talking you through the different stages that people will pass through before they can become a paying client 
And so the first stage is the awareness stage. And like I was just saying to you just now, people can't buy from you if they don't know that you exist. So the way that you build that awareness is by showing up somewhere. And that could look like somebody seeing your website or seeing your post on social media, and then they become aware that you exist. And I always like to compare this to you go to a supermarket and on one of these shelves, they are promoting a new product. So maybe there's a new type of wine or some new crisps or something new that's just recently entered the market and you go to the supermarket and because it's on this big stand with all of these names and it's big letters then you become aware that this new product exists that is the first stage that every single business owner has to overcome first of all people need to be aware of your existence once somebody is aware of your existence, the next step that you need to do is you need to take them through that stage where they then become interested in what it is that you have to offer. Because to use a supermarket example, I could go to the supermarket, I could see the stand promoting this wine, but that doesn't mean I'm going to be interested to get to know it or interested in understanding what the wine is or tasting the wine. So you have to then be able to create that interest. And the way that you can do that on Instagram, on your, on your website, is by creating really eye grabbing attention headlines or having images on there which resonate with people so people become aware that you exist they then become interested in what it is that you have to offer based on the content that you've got on your social media page based on the content that you've got on your website or based on the images that you've got on there so they then become interested and like oh okay i didn't know that this person existed let me take a look through their profile now i'm interested and then you move through to the desire phase. And so the desire phase is now that they are interested in you, they're desiring to get to know more about you. So in that case, then they're going to look at the rest of your content. And you may have seen this happen on Instagram. And I know that I've had so many times where I'll get a notification that somebody has liked about 20 of my past posts. That's because they've become aware of me, they're interested in what it is that I'm saying, and now they're kind of desiring what it is that I have to offer. So that's why they're spending more time exploring what it is that I have to offer. And when they're at the desire stage, what they'll then start to do is they will look at other pages on your website. They'll visit your shop on your website. On, in, on social media, they'll click the link in your bio to be able to explore all of the other things that you have to offer, because then they are then building that desire for what it is that you have and that desire is built by the words that you are using by the language that you are using so if you remember I was talking earlier about being clear on what motivates your client and what they're struggling with that desire is going to be built by that language that you are using and that connection that you are building up with your ideal clients and then you want to move them through to the final stage where they take action. And that action is they buy something from you. So hopefully you can see that it takes, you know, people becoming aware of you, first of all, so they need to know that you exist. Then they have to develop an interest in what it is that you have to say. And that may be through the content that you've put out there, through the types of posts that you've put out there. Then they have the desire and they start to explore your services. They start to look through your shop and then they take action, which means that they buy from you. This entire process can take a week, it can take a year, it can take a month. And there is some statistic that says that it, it takes at least 10 touch points before somebody buys from you. So that means from the moment that somebody becomes aware of you, that you need to be making sure that you are staying top of their mind. So that's why it's important that you are consistent if you're using social media as your strategy, so that people are constantly seeing what it is that you have to offer, they get used to seeing you, and then they start to build that desire in what it is that you have to offer. Because I've had it before where I've been following people for a while, maybe I've subscribed to their email list, maybe I have been following them on social media, and every time that they post, I'm always engaging in their post because I'm interested in what it is that they say. And then when they have an offer on, I desire to have that offer, so I start to explore that offer, and then I buy from them. But that doesn't all happen immediately. Sometimes it does. There are some times where I have just bought something, but other times it takes a while to pass through that process and to go through that funnel. And the reason that the funnel looks the way that it does, it's like an inverted funnel, is because you're going to have lots of people coming in at the top 
So lots of people being aware that you exist, but not all of those people who become aware that you exist will be interested in what it is that you have to offer, will desire what you have to offer, and will then buy from you. So it's just making it clear that, yes, you'll get lots of people coming through at the initial stages, but as they start to pass through and start to get to know you and your business, then it's going to reduce the amount of people down. That's actually a good thing, because obviously you only want people to buy from you who you can help and who you want to work with, because it's going to make your business more productive. And then what you want to happen then is for the people who have bought from you and for the people who like what it is that you have to offer to then communicate that to other people, to tell other people that they like you. I had a message today from somebody who said, oh, somebody's recommended me to you because they said that you can help me to build my business. That's the stage that you want to get to when you start working with the right people. People, those people will advocate on your behalf and start telling everybody else what it is that you do. And that's how you'll be able to then start to convert more clients then as well. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you an example of a sales funnel for a photographer so that you can kind of see the stages that somebody will pass through in order to go from somebody who is aware that you exist to then somebody who wants to buy from you. So let's say that you are a photographer and you have a free gift, which is a, a PDF guide. And, and it's about how it is to prepare for your brand photo shoot. So you post on social media and you tell people, oh, I've got this free gift and it's going to help you to prepare for your brand photo shoot. So then people become aware that you exist and you start to put a little bit more detail into your in, into the description of what it is that you are offering. So you say, I'm going to give you five ways that you can prepare for your brand photo shoot and tell you the biggest mistake that most people make when it comes to preparing for their photo shoot. People then become interested in that because they're like, oh, there's a mistake that people tend to make. I want to know what that mistake is. So then they then they then start to build up that desire. So they go to your website, they fill in their details, they fit, they go to a landing page or they go to a website, they fill in their name and their email address to be able to receive your free guide. Then an email is sent to them with their free gift. So their free PDF guide is then sent to them via email. After that is sent to them via email, then what happens is that a series of five or six other emails get sent to them automatically where you are continuing to deliver value. And so then what happens is that each time that you send an email, because you're sharing something that's valuable and because you're sharing valuable tips, the person that's receiving your emails starts to look forward to receiving them. They start to build that desire for what it is that you have to offer. They start to build that know, like, and trust with you because they now know who you are. They like what it is that you have to say, and they trust that you are an expert experts. So then you make an offer, maybe in your fifth or your sixth email, which is a, a course maybe that helps them to prepare for their brand photo shoot. And you make an offer and then people take action and then buy that offer from you. And then if they don't buy the offer from you there and then, then all you do is that you add them to your regular email list and you continue to give them value via email, continue to make offers, and then at some point then they will buy. But hopefully you can see the different stages that people have to go through in order to buy from you. And this is a very simplistic overview of what a funnel is like. So you have something that people want at the top. People then get the thing that you want. You continue to provide value and nurture them through a series of emails. You then make them an offer and they either buy from you at that point or they buy from you at a future date. And that's the basic concept of a funnel is it's a way to be able to kind of funnel people through your business and take them through to buy in the product that you want them to buy. So I have funnels for different areas of my business and each funnel will start off with what is it that I'm going to do to get people's attention? And it will always end with what is the specific offer that I'm leading people to? So for each funnel that you create, you have to be clear on what are you going to do to get their attention and, and how is what you're doing to get their attention related to the paid offer that you are making at the end? Because it all has to be connected. So in this case, for example, 
if the free gift is five ways to prepare for your brand photo shoot, then the paid offer should relate to brand photo shoots in some way. It wouldn't make sense if the paid offer was then how to do Facebook ads, because it doesn't, it's not connected to the thing that people were interested in in the beginning. So you have to make sure that whatever it is people become interested in you for, you, you are consistently providing the value in relation to the thing that they are interested in. And then you are leading them to a paid product, which is connected to the thing that they are interested in. And then I'm going to give you one more example of a sales funnel for somebody who sells physical products. So let's say that you sell candles. And so what you're going to do to be able to get people's awareness about what it is that you do, maybe you'll put an ad on Google, maybe that on your website, you're going to make sure that you're using the right keywords. So when somebody is Googling your candles or your website comes up. So then people become aware that you exist. They then click onto your website and they see the different candles that you have to offer and they start to become interested in what it is that you do. Then a pop-up appears on the screen offering 10% off for the first order. And all people need to do to get that 10% off is to sign up with their email address. So then they start to become interested in that. So they give their email address. And so when they give you your email address, you send them an email with their 10% off and you hire highlight to them in that email the different candles that you have on offer and you put a little bit of a description underneath each candle and maybe you're sharing things like this candle is perfect for you if you want to relieve anxiety this candle is perfect for you if you want to relax this candle is perfect from you if you are congested and you need something to help you to clear your sinuses so then people then start to build the desire for what it is that you are offering because they see the different candles that you offer and the different things that each candle does and so then what happens then is that you continue to email them continue to remind them of the fact that they've got this voucher and they've got a limited time to to spend this voucher and then people take action then and they'll buy a candle from you and if they don't buy the candle there and then then again you continue to send them emails and at some point in the future they will buy a candle from you but do you see how you're taking them from becoming aware of you by maybe using some keywords on your website to an advert they're then building that interest because they can see the candles that you have on offer they're building that des desire because you're giving them 10 percent off so you're giving them an incentive to buy you're providing more of a description of the candles are up that are on offer and how it is that, that, that it can help them that's going to lead them then to take an action because you're telling them there's urgency around this your 10 percent off is going to expire in seven days so you've got seven days to make sure that you buy this candle to get 10 percent off that's going to encourage people to take action and as i say even if they do not take action immediately then if they are on your email list and if you continue to provide them value via email at some point they will buy from you so that's a great way to be able to have a funnel, have the objective in mind. So start off with how am I going to get people's attention? And then once I've got their attention, what is it that I'm going to do with it? So that's one thing that people always miss when it comes to building a funnel is, first of all, understanding what to do to get their attention and then understanding what's the next stage then. What are the next stages that somebody needs to pass through to be able to buy from me? And then what is it that I am offering them at the very end? And so some tips to help you to be able to convert more customers into buyers, also more of your prospects into buyers, let's say. So they're not a customer yet. They've never bought from you. So here are some things that you can do to make sure that you can then get people from just being interested in you to them buying from you. So you could do things like give out free samples. So maybe if you sell creams or hair products, maybe you can give out free samples so that people can get a taste of what it is that you have to offer. I used to love going to hair shows because during the hair shows, I would leave with bags and bags of free samples. And the thing that was great about it is, is that I would use those samples. And if I really liked them, then I would buy the full size version. So it's a low cost way or it's a no cost way for your consumers to be able to kind of test you out and then see if they like the product that you are creating. Another way that you could do it if you're a service based business is to maybe offer a free call. So in my business, one of the things that I do is that I have a free consultation for somebody who is interested in working with me. And so I'll offer that free consultation so that there's no risk to them because they're not paying anything or they're doing a spend in their time. And then I speak to them, get to know about their business. And at the end of the call, then I make them an offer for a paid product. 
Another way that you can convert more of your ideal clients into buyers is to share value. So I talked about earlier about creating content on social media that speaks to the needs of your ideal clients. So if you are continuously providing value on social media, if you are providing tips, if you are given really valuable information, then people are going to view you as an expert and people are going to start to know, like and trust you. The other thing that you can do to be able to convert more of your ideal clients into buyers is to share social proof. So if you have worked with other people and you've helped them to get a result, or if other people have used your products and they've loved it, share that because people tend to trust what other people say. So if they see that there are reviews on your social media page or on your website from other people who have worked with you, that's going to again reduce their barriers and make it more likely that they will buy from you then in the future. And then another way that you can convert your ideal client into buyers is by engaging with them. So maybe you put out a post on social media and you ask them to comment below what their, you know, whether they agree with your post, comment below what their biggest issue is when it comes to curing their acne. And then you start to have conversations with people. Or maybe what you do is that you go onto your followers' profiles and you start engaging with the posts that they are creating to build that relationship with them. The other thing that you can do to be able to convert more of your ideal clients into paying customers is to ask for the sale more than once. Now, again, this is a mistake that I made when I started my business where I would post about an offer that I had. I would post once. And then if nobody bought, I'd be like, well, this didn't go well, did it? And then I wouldn't post again. But people need to see it more than once, right? Because the way that the algorithms work, people don't always see everything that you post. And people may see something and be like, oh, I'm not ready to buy now, but I'll buy you know, tomorrow or the next day. And if you're not posting, if you're not continually asking people for the sale, you're not giving them the opportunities to be able to buy from you. So ask for the sale more than once. And then the final thing that you can do is to be able to remove any barriers to people buying from you. And so an example that I have for this is that, as I said earlier, one of the things that I do is that I have consultations with my potential clients before they hire me. And on my website, I had a link so that people could book an appointment in my calendar. And this link took them to Acuity Scheduling, which is what I use to be able to book my appointments. So it took them to Acuity Scheduling. And then when they got to Acuity Scheduling, they would have to complete all of their details. And I realized that there's a barrier that I can remove here. There's, some, there's a step that I can remove. So what I did was is that I embedded the booking link onto my website so that if somebody wanted to book an appointment, they didn't even need to leave my website. They could just book it there and then because I embedded the booking form into my website. So I'm removing as many barriers as I can to people being able to buy from me. The way that you could do that is maybe by reducing the amount of buttons that somebody has to click. So I've been on websites before and it's like, OK, then so click here to go to this page and then click here to look at this product and then click here to add it to your basket and then click here to then check out and then click here to enter your details. And so there are so many steps that people have to take in order to buy. And what you have to do is you have to look at your sales process and you have to say, what barriers can I remove? What can I do to make it easier for my client? to buy from me because as many barriers as you remove the better because then people are going to be more likely to buy and I'm going to tell you like there have been times when I've left a website because I've had to click on so many different buttons to get somewhere that by the time I've kind of got into the end I've got so bored I'm just like I'm not doing this anymore and then I leave and that's pretty much what your ideal client is probably going to be thinking so reduce as many barriers as you can by looking at your sales process and looking at the steps that there are in your sales process and asking yourself what is is it that I can remove or what is it like what is it that I can do to make this process easier for my ideal client and then we talked about this a little bit earlier but you also have to know what your conversion is and so again like I said your conversion is the number of people who saw your offer or landed on your website versus the number of people who bought from you 
or took whatever action it is that you're looking for. So whenever it is that you are, you, whenever it is that you are measuring the conversion rate, you need to be clear what it is that you are measuring. So you could be measuring the number of people who signed up for your free gift, the number of people who registered for your webinar, the number of people who booked a free call, the number of people who after booking a free call booked a paid service from you. So you have to be clear what it is that you are measuring. And so, again, making it clear what it is that you are measuring so that you can know what your conversion rate is. And so I'm going to give you some examples now of some conversion rates. So let's say that, for example, you are measuring the conversion rate of your website. So you look at your website and you look at the analytics on your website and you say, OK, I can see 20 people have visited my website. And of those 20 people who visited my website, three people bought something from my shop. That then means that your conversion rate is 0.15%. So 0.15% of people who visited your website then bought from you. And so the way that you can, the way that you uh, work out your conversion rate is the number of people who converted versus the number of people who visited. So in this case, then it would be three divided by 20, and that would give you your conversion rate. And the reason that this is helpful for you is because you need to know, for example, if 20 people are visiting your website and three people bought, that means 17 people didn't buy. What is it that stopped those 17 people from buying? So once you know what your conversion rate is, then you can start to change one thing and I'm going to emphasize that and say it again, one thing about your website at a time. The reason I'm saying change one thing at a time is because if you go onto your website and you say, OK, then well, 17 people aren't buying. What can I do to make sure that these 17 people do buy? And you start changing your headline, you start changing your images, you start changing your text, you change the color of the button, you change what it is that you put onto the button. And then when you measure it again, 20 people visit your website and 10 people bought. Amazing. But you don't know what it was that caused those additional seven people to buy from you. So if you start changing one thing at a time on your website, you can then measure that. So if you change your headline, for example, on your website, then when you're looking at your analytics, you can then measure to see, well, what difference does that make? Am I still converting three people into sales or has that number increased? And if the number is increased and that's a really clear indication that it was the headline that was making people not buy from you. So, again, you can start to tweak things to be able to increase your conversion rate. And what I wanted to do is to give you some examples of conversion rates, depending on the type of industry that you are in, because it does vary from industry to industry. And so this is from it's it's from investpcrow.com and it's a blog. And here you can see there are different like conversion rates depending and depending on the type of industry it is. So, for example, for e-commerce, the typical conversion rates for a website was one point eight four percent. Then for legal, it's 2.7%. And for business, it's 2.23%. And then for finance, it's 5%. So that means of all of the people who kind of land on their website, for e-commerce, 1.84% will then buy. Knowing what the standard conversion rates are for websites can be helpful to let you know where it is that you sit in the market. So you could be lower than that. So your conversion rate could be lower than that or it could be higher than that. If it's lower than that, then again, that gives you a benchmark and helps you to decide, OK, then I need to change some things on my website to be able to increase my conversion rate. Maybe I need to poll people who have visited my website and ask them the question, what stopped you from buying? What is it that I can do to make it, make sure that you are buying from me? So I don't really pay a lot of attention to the standard conversion rates. It's good to give you a benchmark, but every industry is different. And your conversion rate depends on a lot of different things. It depends on what it is that you are selling, how gifted you are at being able to describe what it is that you are selling, the images that you are using, and the strategy that you are using to bring people to your website. So there's a lot of things that can influence your conversion rate, but it can be helpful just to be aware of what the benchmarks are in the industry so that you kind of know where it is that you sit in the industry. 
And then again, there are some conversion rates then for social media. And again, this varies by industry. So, you know, in the healthcare industry, it's 5.6% as a conversion rate. And that basically means that if you post something on Instagram and it's healthcare related and you're asking people to buy, of the people who are following you, 5.6% of them are likely are likely to buy from you. And then again, if you provide B2B services, similar statistic, 3.5% of your followers are then likely to be able to buy from you. And again, the way that you would be able to measure your own insights is to, if you're using Instagram, for example, look at your insights on Instagram, look at the number of people who saw your offer, the number of people then who clicked a link in your bio to explore your offer. And then once you take, once they go to the page then where they are looking at your offer and they're deciding whether to buy, you're then comparing the number of people who actually checked out and then purchased. So you're being able to kind of follow them through through social media. And if you're using something like Google Analytics, then Google Analytics can track that information for you as well. Okay, so we covered a lot. So there was a lot of information to cover. So I hope that you were taking notes. So I shared with you three key things that you can do to be able to attract your ideal client. And I talked about what it is that you need to know about your ideal clients. We talked about the demographics and your psychographics. We talked about the fact that you need to be visible in your business, that people need to know that you exist. And then I said that you need to clearly state what it is that you do so that people are not confused about what product or service it is that you offer. Then I talked to you about how it is that you can build a conversion strategy using ADA, and that stands for awareness, interest, desire, and action. And then I gave you some examples of some sales funnels that you could create in your business to take people from being aware that you exist to them becoming a paying client. And then I also shared with you then some statistics of some conversion rates for websites and social media. And I shared what it is that you can do to help you to boost your conversion rates if you are not happy with those rates. So if you do have any questions, please feel free to pop them into the chat. And then also, if you are in the Waltham Forest area, it's just to make you aware that you can book a call with an advisor. And we have lots of different advisors that you can book a call with. And it's only if you're in the Waltham Forest area and if your business is not to three years old. So we have Roshane, who is about sales skills, sales strategy, marketing, marketing acquisition, and then marketing for sales then you have me and I'm about content creation ideal client identification and attraction visibility strategies and social media marketing then you've got Charlene again marketing brand collaborations and partnerships digital marketing and customer profiling then Claude, he can help you with marketing, business strategy, idea validation, and customer profiling. Nana can talk to you about marketing, product innovation, branding and communication, training and development. Alana can talk to you about sales planning, event management, and business development. And then Andrea can talk to you about financial planning, administration, social media, and bid writing as well. So if you are in the Waltham Forest area, if you are, if you do have a business that's not to three years old, then you can book a call. So once you get sent the replay of this webinar, there will be a link in there so that you can go and you'll know what to do to be able to book a call. And you can choose any of the advisors that are on there for you as as well. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you have found this really useful and I would love to hear from you. So please feel free to connect with me. And if you do need any support, then make sure you get in touch and book yourself an advisor. Until next time. Thank you. Thank you.